everyone. Welcome to the latest in Partners for Progressive Israel's webinar series. I'm Karen Shapiro, Vice President of Partners for Progressive Israel. We're honored to have Gabby Lasky with us here today. Before I introduce Gabby, let me note that Partners for Progressive Israel is an American not-for-profit dedicated to the achievement of a durable and just peace between Israel and its neighbors, which includes an end to Israel's occupation based on a two-state solution. Partners supports Israelis working to ensure social justice, civil rights, and equality for all of Israel's inhabitants. The organization cultivates Jewish Arab partnerships and seeks to deepen Americans and internationals understanding of Israel and Palestine's complexities so they can better advocate for a progressive future for all of the inhabitants of the region. Partners is glad to be bringing this webinar to all of you for free. If you enjoy it and want to more program like this, please visit our website, progressiveisrael.org and make a contribution. And just a quick note about our upcoming program, Partners for Progressive Israel is in the midst of our Digital Israeli-Palestine Symposium, which will go through mid-December. This coming Sunday, the focus will be on religion and human rights. In the first session, we will explore some of the ways in which religion has supported or failed to support human rights in Israel. In the second session, we will discuss the conduct of Israel toward both foreign workers and asylum seekers through the lens of religion. Check it out on our website for more information and to register. Regarding today's format of this webinar, after I introduce Gabi, I will begin by asking her several questions. In the meantime, feel free to write your questions in the Q&A. And as we move forward, I will ask as many as possible. I will not be monitoring the chat, so please write your questions in the Q&A. Now, with great pleasure, I will introduce Gabi Lasky. Until yesterday, Gabi was a member of the Knesset on behalf of the Merits Party. She served on the Knesset's Constitution, Law, and Justice Committee and its Committee on the Status of Women and Gender Equality. Prior to entering the Knesset, Gabby served on the Tel Aviv City Council for five years, representing merits. She shared the city's commission for the advancement of the status of women and gender equality and was an advisor to the mayor on sustainability and urbanism. Gabby is a human rights activist and expert. For years, she has practiced as a human rights attorney focusing on the defense of freedom of expression and protests, in addition to cases involving torture, false imprisonment, and police brutality within both Israel and the occupied territories. Gabby's law firm has represented high profile defendants, including various human rights NGOs, as well as protesters against the occupation, against police violence and for social justice. In the early 2000s, Gabby served as Secretary General of the Peace Now Movement. In 2012, she was the recipient of the Association for Civil Rights in Israel's Emil Gunzwag Human Rights Award. Born in Mexico, and by the way, she just returned from Mexico, Gabi immigrated to Israel at the age of 15. Welcome, Gabi. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Very glad to be with you. We are all deeply saddened that you and our other friends in the Merits Party did not reach the minimum vote, vote threshold and are now, as of yesterday, out of the Knesset altogether. What happened? Could you give us your perspective on why Merits failed to get past the electoral threshold of 3.25%? Well, uh, we're all um, still very saddened and actually we still can't believe that this was the, the decision of the, of the people that, that went down and vote and, and voted. A lot of things 
uh, I can say why this happened. And we still don't have the, the real, you know, exact answers for that. But I, I don't want to like not, not relate to your question. And, and I will try to do it as honest as I can. Um, and one of the, there are several, several things. First, we can look at it, you know, globally. We know that around the world, we have seen the world going more to the right than to the left and merits being the, the left wing uh, party of Israel. So in a, in a sense, we're the ones that, that, are, that are, are being left out because, you know, but I can say that there was also uh, for several years, there has been uh, um, through the, the, the Netanyahu's government and, and other partners of him, uh, there has been a, a, um, a complete, uh, how do you say, uh, I would say like a, a movement of trying to, to bash the left and liberalism and, uh, and all the values that we represent. And so people, in a sense, were not feeling comfortable to be part of, of, of that. Either say that, uh, that human rights organizations represent terrorists or are or giving back or are defending terrorism and things like that, or that um, that uh, human rights is only a way to 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 bash Israel and uh, and things like that, or that the the parties that are trying to bring um, peace with our neighbors, with our Palestinian neighbors, are trying to destroy Israel and things like that. So in a sense, people just didn't want to. Um, to identify with that, not because they don't think they identify with those values, <clears throat> but because the hatred towards the left is so hard and we can see it in the streets during all the demonstrations. We see that violence towards lefties is, 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 is real. And so people just felt in a more, in a better place, not, not voting for, um, for the left. But also there were other reasons and some of them are very practical and technical. Um, the reason that, that that's why the prime minister still until now, Yair Lapid tried to make a technical federation between the Labour Party and Merits to run together in the elections in order not to waste any left votes. Um, and actually Merits openly said that we are, although we think that Merits needs to be represented in the Knesset individually, but we were open to the idea, and we were saying that um, that it was that it was the right thing to do. And actually, Marav Michaeli from the Labour Party completely um, denied this idea of running together, not as the same party, but in a technical unity uh, in order to um, to pass the threshold. I I can say that more than 150,000 people still voted for merits, meaning that there is an electorate, but we were 3,000 and something, um, um, 3,700 3, and something votes uh, away from the threshold, which means that many, many left voters uh, votes that were casted for merits, for the left, for our values and ideology were actually thrown uh, thrown away and are not represented in the Knesset, although it's a lot of it's a lot of voters. And I think that if we would have run as we thought that was best in in this unity fraction of, uh, together with the labor, then all of these votes would not have been uh, casted away. Uh, I think that Prime Minister um, Lapid should have been tougher in this idea of being being the leader of of the center left should have uh, made it more clear to Michaeli that it's almost not a question of choice, but, uh, but it's something that has to be done. And so he wasn't tough enough. Merab Michaeli denied that. And so we were left in that situation. Um, but I think that we also have to look inside. We also have to, to look into the eyes of our voters and our supporters and, and, and and say what was wrong. First, I think that our campaign was not a good campaign. Um, we didn't talk about all the 
incredible things that Meretz did in this in this government in that last last government through um, through the 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 things that we did by by our ministers in the in the health uh, minister or in the in the minister of um, of the um, environment um, environment so we had a lot of things that we did there our members of parliament we were all cast at number one in being in the Knesset in being the best parliamentarians using the uh, passing uh, legislation in the Knesset. So we were very good in the Knesset. We, we, you know that Meretz is also very good or has always been very good in the opposition. But even uh, that we were not there for more than 20 years, we were very good as coalition members in the sense that we that we were very, um, very good parliamentarians. But we have to also to say that through being in this very complicated government, uh, and all our voters in, in all the polls that we made were very interested that we don't topple the government. We did leave questions regarding occupation behind. This was like the reason that the, the raison d'etre of this government, that we're not going to end occupation and that we're not going um, and that we're not going to um, to see uh, annexation. But still, I think that Meretz was. Um, uh, wasn't able to bring all the their values and the ideology regarding the occupation into into the government. Although there are a lot of things that we were able to do, we uh, we were able to topple many new illegal outposts. But you know things that were not outside. But you know every time all the 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 settlers were still trying all the time to create new outposts. And because we were in the government, we received the information and we immediately worked for, for them to, to be dismantled. So this we did, we stopped the, um, the plans of E1. The, um, we stopped the possibility of, of uh, creating a new settlement in, um, um, in Atarot where the airport once was. So we were working on, very strong regarding occupation, but our, I think that this government uh, was very right wing regarding regarding the fact that um, that there was no no that the settlers or the violent settlers had really impunity, uh, although uh, the the minister of defense and the minister of police were in the hands of center or center left. Uh, ministers uh, in that in that hand. So I think that things re regarding occupation, regarding our ideology in, in occupation, was not um, was one of the reasons some of our voters actually voted or didn't go out to vote, and others voted for for the Arab uh, Unity Party. So that's also something that happened, and we have to look it straight in the eye. Um, whether we were right or not, that's another question, but the, I'm, I'm planting what, what are the things that happened. Another, and another thing is that in our campaign, I was saying um, we didn't um, diversify our, why was merit so important in, whether in government or in, in, the, in, in the opposition. Um, that our campaign was more related to whether it be Meretz or Bengvir, but you know, also the Yeshatid party, the prime minister's party could say the same thing, say, same as labor party. But we should have pointed out with a much more openness and greatness, what is the difference between us and them? Because now I can tell you sadly that if Netanyahu makes this right, right wing party a government, then there is no real opposition. There's no one in the opposition that can can say the words occupation freely and easily. That said, that not only says that we need uh, that we need to arrive to to a peaceful um, a, a end of conflict with the Palestinians, but none none of them really work regarding human rights. Uh, issues in the West Bank. We don't see them in the demonstrations. We don't see them in, in the ground as you can see some of the members of Merits in the ground uh, with 
with the activists and we are talking about the occupation and this is not there this is not represented in the Knesset anymore and this is going to be a voice that is um that is not going to be heard directly by members of Knesset we are seeing what we're going to do but that but that is not there and another and another issue um i think is that um i have to say that every time that merit has been in the government next elections they lose electorate um this is for a fact why uh it's maybe because our electorate is very very ideologist uh, very ideological and um and so in the one hand the member of parliament and the party in, in itself makes compromises in order to 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 be in the government but on the other hand our voters although they they know how important it is to be in government they are much more difficult in saying okay this compromise is necessary and so we had this this balance that we have to make every time that we are that we're in government but we never thought that we're not going to pass a threshold and this is not only saddening uh, for us i even heard members of the right wing now in the knesset saying that um that that merits is needed in the government because the voice of merits the ideological voice the the, the very um straightforward voice of merits needs to be in parliament even for them for the right wing to make this balances that they need that sometimes they go too far even without them wanting to because there's no there's no one in the other side that is calling for that uh, that's telling them and also because the voice of human or civil rights in, in in israel is a voice important to all the citizens not only to to left wing regarding things that i did regarding uh freedom of demonstration it's not only the lefties that demonstrate but there's no strong voice defending the rights of of demonstrators in the parliament so those voices are needed for for uh, for the best of of israel so it's very it's very hard of course for me um individually i just started i was a year and a half a member of parliament and you know you you have a transitional period that you have to learn because it's something else it's it's a so you have to learn how to be the best of yourself as a parliamentarian uh, and so many things were on we were working on them that we couldn't that we couldn't finalize so it's very it's very for for me it's very sad but i think it's very tragic for merits and for the israeli society that we got to this point we would totally agree with you gabby we're so so hard to uh, we love the, you know, a just democratic Israel, and it's hard to imagine merits, as you said, considered the conscious of Israel to no longer be represented in the Knesset. And it's been there for 30, it's a 30 year old party that has served as the core of the Israel left. What do you see, do you see as the future for merits? Well, um, first of all, I, I have to I have to say that um, we although we are you know these elections made us you know were very tragic for not only for for our voters but for for the left I think that although we are in this very low point we have to rise our heads and know that our ideology is still uh, important in even in this diff most more so in this in important in these difficult times i have to say that when i try to understand israeli society i have to say and we have to look into the eyes of 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 our voters and ourselves and say there there is a war of values in israel and it's the the fact that we are we are a, a Demo jewish and democratic state the the other side or the right wing knows that Israel is a Jewish and democratic state, but they look at it in the Jewish values very different than we do. 
And we have to know that. They believe that, that um, uh, liberalism is not Jewish. That taking uh, into consideration the rights of the minorities in Israel, uh, the fact that the occupation is bad for Israel, and all of those things, they are looking at it into, into, a, in, into the prisma of a very, very right wing, um, um, radical, very radical right wing, neo fascist way of looking to Judaism. And we have to know that here our values are, are at stake and that this is a war of values between liberal Judaism and, and, uh, and messianic Judaism in a, in a sense. And that, that you being in the diaspora are also going to be targeted because your Jewish values are so different. You know, there we have been hearing now that they want to, to change the law of return, for example, that no, that it will not go as far as the as the the third generation or the grandchildren, for example. They want to topple that. They don't want to to uh, to uh, um, recognize the, um, the the reform or conservative um, uh, um, how do you say the um, the um, conversions? Not that in Israel you can convert that like that, but those conversions that if they were made outside of Israel in the United States, they would be uh, they would be accepted here. So they they don't want to accept them anymore. In a, in a way, the fact that Israel is a you know, is part of the democratic world doesn't mean to them in, it's not important for, for some of these parts of, of the government. You have to understand that there are, there will be, or probably will have some members of government that are not allowed in the United States because they have been, um, a, they have been a, a, charged with terror cases. Um, so, so we have, we have to understand that. And the other, and, and the last thing is I, I saw a comment, the, the values also have to do regarding, uh, as I think that I, I was clear on that, but like Messianic Judaism looks also into the, into the occupied territories as being part of the land of Israel and justify occupation and apartheid because of Jewish values that they, that they believe in. And this is ex exactly our Jewish value that tells us that we cannot uh, that we cannot occupy two million people, uh, not only because of democratic reasons, but also because of our Jewish values. So it's going to be it's going to be very hard. But we have to to stand to stand uh, high with our heads high. We're not going to. We, we have to find what will be the right the right way to present ourselves to the next elections. We haven't had, I can tell you, our Zava Galon is now sick. Uh, oh. So so we haven't had a front-to-front, -front, you know, a meeting. But next week we will have uh, the the General Assembly of Merits will we'll meet, will start um, thinking of what is, how are we going to continue, whether you know the possibilities are open as merits together with other parties um making a partnership a, a jewish arab partnership um new party we still don't know but what i can tell you is that you should be um you should be sure that we're not going to leave the stage for uh for for less progressive parties um the um, you know we're not going to we're not going to get down on the stage we're going to even when we're not there we're trying to find ways how we can um present our our values human rights uh human rights values civil rights uh democ democrat democratic values in the knesset uh we will 
we will see how is the best way to do it with our partners. We're still standing with you, although you're there and we are here and we're not in the Knesset, but we still share uh, the same things that we shared two days ago uh, when we were when we were members in the Knesset, and we'll and we'll give them a fight. We will not let them change the the um, change the 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 conscience of Israel. Um, so, and we will do it together. Well, we are here with you and we look forward to hearing <clears throat> what comes from your meetings. But talking about that, um, uh, there are lots of questions about Jews and Arabs working politically together and whether there can be a per, uh, it, the potential for progressive Jews and Arabs to, to work together, whether it be in a Jewish Arab party or how, is, is there anything or working, uh, would you join a boss or is there any ways you, you see working together in a Jewish Arab party? Well, first I have to say that actually uh, merit in these elections was really the Jewish Arab party in the sense that in our 10 first slots, we had four uh, Israeli Arabs uh, that were elected to the to the merits list uh, without you know without ha having to say to the people um, uh, you have to vote for an Arab or not. So this is a, this was a natural thing for 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 merits. So I think in that sense um, merits was really living up to the idea of. Of a of a unity between uh, between uh, our Jews and Arabs uh, in Israel, and we do believe that that is the right path uh, that we have to that we have to go. And now, you know, it, it's it seems years ago, but it's only you know the elections were were two weeks ago, and um, so we we have to we have to go back. To, to to the society, to the Israeli society that has, um, you know, that and takes into consideration the needs of both Jews and Arabs, because sometimes there are different needs. What's happening inside the, the Arab societies regarding violence, the internal violence, and things like that. And that these are things that we have to topple together as a community. And I think that we have no choice but to make and to 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 fight together as Jews and Arabs for the best of Israel and the needs of all of of, of all the citizens uh, in an equal manner. So I think that we are going on that direction. Um, but and, and we hope I can't tell you exactly how we're going to do it. But that is, of course, our our aim uh, in order to to go further. Well. Given that the that it looks like we have we have a far right government, it's likely con to consist of a coalition of Jewish supremacists, authoritarians, and religious fundamentalists. What can the progressive camp do now, even outside of the government, to uh, support the human rights and civil rights in Israel? Okay, first of all, we are, um, we have to, everything that we can't do through the, through the Knesset, because you're right, it's Jewish supremacies and racism and xenophobia, uh, all of these are, are going to be represented in this right-wing government. Uh, and of course, uh, annexationists, you know, and, and, and messianic Judaism and fundamentalism are going to be there. Um, so I think that first we have to start working um, we have to strengthen the, the activists community, the NGO community. And I think that in this part, I think that you have a very important part to play because Israel's interests are very, are, are very, um, are knitted to, to the U S and to other, and to other international friends. And I think that your voice is going to be, it's going to be needed that you rise it up um, inside, you know, towards, towards the Israeli government. 
And again, the fact that we criticize Israel doesn't mean that we don't love Israel, but exactly the opposite. And it has to be, you know, we are, we are going to hear voices, whether in, you know, complaining that all of us that are criticizing Israel, we're, we're terror lovers or we're anti-Israelis or anti-Zionists or, or whatever. But I think that we, we need to, to, to make a, a clear and loud voice regarding what Israel has, has to be. Um, we, have to, we have to create new coalitions uh, inside of Israel and outside with our with our partners, and we have to be working very very thoughtful. I think that for a long time the right wing created all this um, this uh, centers for academic or semi academic uh, uh, centers regarding you know uh, uh, regarding um, uh, um, how do you say um, medinut. Um, oh policies Pol yes yeah all these policy uh, centers and then they were creating uh, papers and drafts and giving it to the members of parliament and to the government offices i think that we also have to work through there in order to show what are the consequences of the the right wing uh, policies so i think it's very important that we that we actually work on that and we have to work uh, inside the Knesset and we will try to see how us that represented merits in the Knesset, we go back there and continue representing it, even not as members of parliament, but as citizens, concerned citizens from the left that we, that we uh, bring the voice that is not going to be heard by, by the other members of parliament. So we have to be there and we will need your support for 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 us for doing that we will talk later when we have a, a more specific plan of how we're going to do things uh and of course we we want to share with you our, our new ideas when we have something more more concrete and specific so we can we can divide work but i think it's not only in 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 the shoulders of you know of 40 members of parliament that are in the opposition it's in the shoulders of all of us to to give a good fight to 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 keep you know uh, Israel a democratic uh, a democratic country a democratic space with equality um, that we are very afraid that because of the needs of uh, Netanyahu they will completely disappear. So it is it's a true it's a true and eminent danger. We have to know that. And on the other hand, we have to be together. We have to be connected all the time because it's our own. It's the same fight that we're going to be fighting, and we have to prepare like they did. The the right wing and the settlers have plans for you know, they have long term goals, and they base their methodology by looking into their long term plans. I think that the left in Israel specifically, but we have not been planners enough. We are all the time just uh, responding to to things that happen from the right, and we have uh, we have to plan uh, ahead and through that uh, what are long goals, uh, long term goals, and plan why how we're going to achieve them. Um, and so that's important that 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 we do also together. Well. We look, we look forward to you telling us how we can, once you have more details, we're here for you. And we definitely would be uh, uh, welcome whatever you say and others in the party say how we can best serve and support what we all, the goals for all of us. I want, I, I have to say, I was surprised and I, I want you to know that in our last, uh, in our symposium last Sunday, we met with several people from the LGBTQ plus community. They were very concerned with what this new government will do in the judicial system in particular. They, in fact, they expressed their fear that, that they might be used as a distraction that they had been told they won't be attacked as a community, but that they would, um, and so they would make nice with them 
and in the background at the same time they would grab power with the override bill and so they felt that you know it would look like oh they're being good to the lgbtq plus community but but in the background other things going on so what can be done to pressure to preserve democracy within the green line and what can we do to support that First and you all, as and and also you as an an attorney what strengths do you have and personally what would do you plan to do or can do look i i didn't talk about the specifically about the override uh legislation but the override legislation really is uh, is uh almost an end to to demo, de democracy in Israel uh, and to the idea of checks and balances and the idea of human rights and the rights of minorities completely 100%. Um, and we have to know why they want to pass this, this legislation. First of all, is in order to allow uh, giving allocations to the to the to the very religious uh, people without us going to to turn this legislation out saying that it's unequal also regarding uh, LGTB communities uh, and also we have to remember the law that Smotrich tried to pass in several Knessets ago regarding land grabbing in the West Bank in the occupied territories uh, although if it, even if it's Palestinian land that they don't have to give it back so so those are some of some of the reasons they want to they they want that the Knesset will overrule uh, the Supreme Court decisions, but also we have uh, we have Netanyahu's trial. So some of the things that they want to erase, some of the articles that he has been indicted on, and and that's that's for sure, that that's true. So what can we do? First, information. Okay, we have to really inform the people what is the the meaning, the true meaning of the legislations that they want to pass, and not only how it affects democracy as a whole, because there's a lot, of, I, I've been, I've noticed that many people, when you talk to them in abstract terms, don't really understand, but you have to talk how it, how it, it will affect them, their communities, personally. So that's something that we, that we have to do um so that is information secondly we also have um some of the things that when it happened we will be prepared to go to court in order to to topple them although we have seen already that the courts are not being as um as liberal as they were before that was also part of you know of the long-term planning of the right wing appointing um appointing uh, judges that were less liberal so we have started to, to feel the the consequences of that but we will probably go go to to the to the israeli courts in order to topple that kind of legislation that is against human rights or against um against dem democratic values so we will do that um but again, the Jewish communities outside of Israel have to, to present their voice towards this government and not to say that because this is a right wing government, they don't have to hear us uh, because you're a majority outside. And Israel in, in many ways depends also in, 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 the, in the fact that the, that the other countries still, um, still are behind Israel. And regretfully, regarding everything that we believe in, in ending the occupation, this is going to be, I think, one of the hardest things. I think that one of the things that they want to do immediately is to try and uh, legalize all the illegal settlements, um, which is, I think, it's it's one of the basic things that the, that the very right wing wants in their coalition agreement. And I think um, that you have to go out to your governments and for them to tell Israel that this is unacceptable. So you will have to, again, be very active with your um, candidates and with, uh, and with your 
representatives, you know, saying that there are things that are going to be happening and they have to to put a to put their a step regarding that. And in a sense, actually, um, um, actually, we're we've been talking a lot about, you know, in in this government, we were saying that it was important for to talk with the representatives regarding our our. Um, Regarding the arm that Israel needs funding for the arm shields, how do you say the, um, the defense? Defense, defense shield. yeah. Defense shield. Yes. Okay, so that was a very important thing. So in a sense, Israel still depends on the United States for its defense, but it has to be clear that Israel cannot do whatever they need to to in in the West Bank in the occupied territories, and and make it uh, more, more even violent space uh, for Palestinians and things like that. Well, uh, and that the United States says nothing about it. So it, you will also have a task there um, right. in, in that sense. And we will have to strengthen our, you know, our NGOs uh, and probably there will be more legislation against them as there was in the past in the, in the right-wing government. But we will have to we will have to use grassroots movements and NGOs and uh, everything possible that we can in order to to um, identify the, the 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 consequences and try to and try to stop them. Thank you, Gabby. We have a lot of questions here. I have to say we have quite the international group with us, people from Germany and the UK, as well as the United States and, and Israel, I believe. So uh, I'm going to start asking some of these questions you've already addressed, but uh, there's one here that uh, from actually um, uh, someone who's here from Germany who asked, uh, why is the word occupation in the mainstream Israeli society not heard and not accepted, but ignored? Uh, first of all, it, it's a right proposition. Um, it's not only that it's ignored, there is a big fight in trying to deny that there is occupation. It's not only a question of linguistics, but it's a question of ideology. Because we know that there is there is occupation, then there are consequences from ruling from from uh, international law uh, that apply to occupation of how you should treat the people in the occupied powers, and that occupation cannot be something that is uh, permanent. So, because the the right wing and even the center believe that it has to be permanent, they don't even want to call it occupation. But it's more than that. They say that because the land of Israel, all the land of Israel has been given by God to the Jews, then it, it's not an occupation, but it's, it's, some, it's near like the, what Putin is saying, you know, it is bringing back what it was all, already ours. So it's not an occupation. Um, so that's why the, the importance of just even naming occupation by its true name in the Knesset was so important. And there's regretfully always no, no one almost left there that will do it, that will say it, unless that they're from the Arab parties. But even labor and people who, everyday people who are not religious. I remember when I was in Israel, I was surprised how many people who were not ultra religious, they would say, what occupation? Why is it it's so avoided? I, I think that um, uh, in a sense, we didn't do our job right. Um, if I can if I tell you that in the Ministry of Education, the the map, you know, the maps in in the school books do not show the green line. Right. You know, it's something not only religiously ideologically, but that is the ideology of the right, you know, to make an exec an ex annexation of all the, the occupied territories. So they don't want to talk about annexation. They want to talk about the old land of Israel and that the settlements are 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 legal. And you know, so they don't want to to they don't want to put any kind of a 
of label that that will allow young children and you know, children or soldiers or, or whatever to, to start looking into into what occupation means and start talking about the, in in the in a way that you no know, it is illegal and Israel has to end occupation. So it I have to say that the right wing has done a very good job in erasing the term of occupation the same way that they have erased the green line. Um, and actually pe many people do not know when they enter the West Bank or the occupied territories that they're not in Israel anymore. And that was one of the things that I was trying to do in, as a member of parliament uh, to, to, to bring back the green line again. But um, everyone, I think even from the Labour Party to, to the extreme right are not interested in, in talking about occupation. Um, I, I will tell you a small an anecdote. As a member of parliament, I turned to Merav Michaeli that she was the Minister of Transportation in order to write in, in, the, in the exact place in all, the, in all the roads that are crossing Israel to the West Bank to, to write uh, you know, a, a sign that says, welcome to Israel or goodbye, you, know, you have just gotten out of the state of Israel as you do in any other, in any other place where, where you leave the state and you go back but she didn't want she she didn't answer to me. But in that way, you put in the red in the green line exactly where you know where you're going when you're going in and when you're going out, because it's not it, it's not there. You don't see it. So they, they are all the time trying to elude and erase the green line. And so in the same way, they are trying to erase to erase the the fact that there is an occupation. Well, we need you to continue to remind people, and we will as well. There's a question here that comes up often in the United States. Uh, how is it possible for Israel to be a democracy and a Jewish state? And the whole idea, I, I know it's different in Israel that Zionism is a question here in the United States also. How can you be a Zionist and also uh, be a democracy and how did the two, you know, there's a lot of confusion around that in the United States. So can you speak about democracy and a, and a Jewish state for a moment and how the two? Yes, I, I can, I can do that. You know, it's a, it's a question for a symposium, you know, right. But, but, but of course I have, um, I think that the, the, um, the truth is I would like to, to propose what is written in the merits, um, in the merits, um, they, they, it, like in your mission, in your yeah, in, in the merits mission, it says that Israel is it's the state of the Jewish people and of all of the, all of its citizens. In that sense, it takes from you know from constitutions from a lot of places where they. They say that, you know, that Bosnia is the, the land of the people from Bosnia and all the minorities in there and, and things like that. What the fact is that Israel has to, to one of them is that Israel is or wants to be uh, a, a, demo, a, a democracy, a Western democracy with all the democratic values and not only formalistic values uh, of, of a democracy, but well rooted. And the 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 the, city, the 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 state of Israel is a state um, of the of the Jewish people, but at the same time, it's the state of all the other citizens. So, in that sense, when when you talk about it like this, there is no problem between uh, between Israel being a, a being a democracy and a Jewish state, like the United States is the state. It's the is a democracy and. Uh, and it's the state of the Americans. And also, you know, I'm Mexican and there's so many Mexicans there and they, they don't have the same rights as the Americans uh, living there. Um, and also we have to remember that, you know, the state of Israel was created as a, as the, um, as a consequence of, of the Shoah. And it was really the, 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 the place where the, the people that were that were nirdafim um, um, that they were 
Nirdafim, how do you say that? That they were Nirdafim. Nirdafim, I'm not sure. After, after the Holocaust, you know, the, the, the state of Israel was created as a safeguard of the state of, of oh. the Jewish people. Uh, it, it, thank you, persecuted. You know, it was a, the people of Israel were persecuted and, um, and then and they had uh, and they, they created the state, uh, but that at the same time, should take into into consideration all the other people that are living here with equal rights um as a notion as we believe that the palestinians must have their own independent state democratic independent state for for the palestinian people it is somehow strange because judaism is many things so in in one sense in judaism is also a, a religion but it's also uh, it's also a people, and right. I don't think um, and I don't think that there is a question that peoples have the right for their own uh, independent state. Um, the question is, how, what do we do with that? And in this new government, we're hearing a lot of you know of Jew, Jew, uh, of not white supremacy, but of Jewish supremacy in the sense right. that. When we have, if, if the state is a Jewish state, then we can infringe the rights of non-Jews uh, or give them less rights. And something that happened with, uh, you know, I think that the, the law, the, the basic law of Israel as a Jewish nation state, I think that is a very problematic law. And, and I think that it does mm, carry out with it some questions about how you can be Jewish and democratic. I think that this law toppled the balance that we were trying to create in the state of Israel of being a democracy and a Jewish state at the same time. And I think that this in 2018 legislation, being it a basic law, it has toppled this very, very um, fragile balance that we were trying to create and and uh and we were trying in this last Knesset we tried to erase it uh to annul this legislation and and I have to say regretfully that we that we didn't have um uh we didn't have uh, many members of Knesset even from from the same our government that were in favor they were all in favor of presenting a, a new clause and the equality clause inside this law or making a new basic law of equality, which is very important, but they were not in favor of erasing the whole uh, basic law. And this is one of the differences between merits and the other parties that are now represented in, in the Knesset. Yes. So one more, the, uh, the, what are the plans to reach out to the Mizrahim who have been marginalized both culturally and economically and and how can they be embraced? Look, first of all, that's something that we talk about every election. Um, Meretz is, is, is a party that, a very strange party, let's say. It, it, it's more, it's, it's, it's more like an American party uh, than an Israeli one. In what sense? In the sense that we are not working only for a specific electorate, only for those that vote for us. For example, the, the religious work only for the needs of the religious people, or there are parties that are working for the bourgeois, or for the settlers. Merits, actually, uh, we work for, for the needs of Israeli citizens. And I can say that one of the important Things that I was doing in this election, in this Knesset, was working for uh, affordable housing. And there is, because the, the Mizrahi, are, their economic status is, 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 uh, is weaker than, in, than others in the, in the state, then a lot of the work that I was doing actually was for, for this community. And the, the affordable housing bills were passed in the past by merits members. But it doesn't give us back the, um, the voting. 
okay, the, 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 the voting. So I think that we have been working in for, for the, the Mizrahi community, but I think that we have to be more open and more uh, with a much more reaching out to, to these communities and uh, and 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 have and and see what uh, what I also can say that they are um, these communities the Mizrahi communities in if we talk about you know in, in general because I'm generalizing I don't like it and it's not true because there are Mizrahis that vote for merits and vote for the left but you know but um um but in we we do have to we do have to say generally speaking that they're more mesorati you know they're less um they're less um um liberal they're a little more religious and uh and they're more they're more to prone to to the right wing also economically speaking so these are things that we that we need to have an open dialogue uh, between communities and it's not only a matter of representation because they say you don't have Mizrahis represented in merits but actually we do number two in merits today Mosi Raz he's of Mizrahi descent um, oh. so yeah so, so yeah yeah so well we had um you know you talked about us uh, the talking more in a symposium format We've actually had some of these discussions in our symposium, and and uh, we have we look forward to doing more of that. And I see that the time is coming to an end, and we have lots of questions. I'm sorry I didn't get to get to all of them, but I really want to thank you, Gabby. You told me you just arrived from uh, Mexico, but so I appreciate you jet lagged and all coming on and, and answering so thoroughly our questions. And I hope you know that we greatly appreciate your time and we want to be more engaged in conversations with you and others in the Merits Party. And we are here for you in any and every way we can to support the work that you will do outside of the Knesset now. And we I think that's very important that we find ways to amplify that voice and uh, your idea of still being in the Knesset without being in the Knesset, I think is smart to show up there and speak out in what ways you can. So we encourage that and let us know how we can support you in the future. Uh, Thanks to uh, our executive director, Dinesh, and to Ron for all the work in making this discussion happen today. And thanks to everyone who joined us from all over the world. We hope that you have learned and enjoyed this webinar and will share uh, what you've learned with others and share partners for Progressive Israel. And in case you missed what I mentioned in the beginning, Partners is in the midst of our Digital Israel Symposium, where uh, next Sunday, this coming Sunday, we will focus on religion and human rights. And that some of which uh, we were talking about earlier with Gabi will be part of those two sessions uh, this coming Sunday. You can check out our website for more information and to register. Uh, Last but not least, while today's program has been free, generous contributions are what enable the organization to deliver events at no cost. So please visit our website, progressiveisrael.org. Check out our upcoming program, and if you can, make a donation. Thank you, Gabby, for always being there for us, always saying yes to us, and for being with us here today. Thank you very much. And just one word i i Please. i have to to say it strong enough there this government is going to be very problematic and we will be fearing it for the things that they can do in israel but please let don't stop talking against occupation and the fact that this occupation is becoming apartheid and we cannot stop and even don't touch the the, the issue there are a lot of problems that are going to be inside but it has to come from us that we cannot allow Israel to be an occupying state. And thank you so much for inviting me and for, for being 
you know, for being with us all the time and being our partners. Um, and we will and we will continue uh, working you. together. Thank you. We look forward to hearing how the meeting goes uh, next week. And and I'll drop a note to Zahava. I hope she feels better. Uh, I know you. this has been hard on her as well. Take care of yourself and be well. Thank you, everyone.